Hey everyone, welcome to part four of my 1976 Sony Trinitron repair slash restoration video, the final video in this series. Um, so I finally got my 240p test suite, which is essentially a Genesis game, not game, but a, a cartridge. And I've got my Genesis set up here, as you can see, my Genesis 2. And it's a really cool little tool. Like, like I said in my last video, it's a very popular tool. All the CRT YouTubers have this tool to adjust their televisions and check for convergence and sharpness and geometry, all that stuff. So right away, as you can see, it's really, it needs some work. Um, I'll show you real quick here. There's a grid pattern that you can pull up. Um, this is one of the primary tools you use for screen size, aspect ratio, geometry, all that stuff. And you can see it's got some pin cushion issues, warping issues. There's also color bars you use to convergence here for getting the three guns to line up the proper way. So there's your, yeah. So it's really, it's really neat. It's pretty intimidating, lots of stuff in there to go through. But my primary thing I'm focusing on is the geometry issues, because there's, those are the most noticeable to me. There are some convergence issues as well, but those are just gonna be, I think, easily uh, tweaked with uh, potentiometers and stuff. So um, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna, at this point, put this thing back on the table open it up again, put my special little plug on there and fire it up. And the first thing I'm gonna do, there's that sound too, I gotta, I gotta fix that. That's uh, something loose in there. So I gotta, I gotta tweak that as well. But um, I'm gonna open the TV up and I'm gonna take the yoke and physically twist it. And I think that's part of it. It looks like it's kind of tilted a little bit. I can fix the screen tilt with that and also kind of pull it in and out and it might help correct some of those issues, but I think I'll be, you know, adjusting some potentiometers as well to try to get this uh, looking a lot better. So this is the final stages. Hopefully this won't be too long of a video. I can finally say I'm done and comfortably play my Atari games and be happy. So let's uh, give this a shot. All right, so got the TV apart again, hopefully for the last time. Um, so there's this um, knob here that you can loosen. And what that's gonna do is break this loose and I should be able to, I should be able to turn this yoke back and forth and forward and backwards to try to adjust the tilt and maybe some of the convergence and geometry issues. <clears throat> we'll see how it does. I don't think that's gonna be the only thing I do, but that's where I'm gonna start. So we'll see how that affects the screen. I gotta be careful because I do have to have it. I'm gonna break it loose first, but I have to turn the TV back on and then move it back and forth. I'm gonna wear gloves, um, but yeah, gotta be careful with that, so. All right, guys, so I was able to break this loose. Gotta be careful with my bare hands in here, but this thing can now twist back and forth. So I'm gonna set the camera up on the front side and we'll see what kind of effect that has. Okay, so you can see that we have our grid pattern on. Again, I'm using my gloves to be safe. Now we can adjust the tilt. Get it just right. Ooh, too much. That looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna slide it back and forth too. I don't know if that's gonna have any effect on
Let's see, it looks crooked here, but see, that's the. Let's look at this uh, this thing here. Oops, monoscope. Let's see, it looks like it's a tad off. So now we're doing some screen adjustments. So what we want to do is have these dots about halfway between the outer edge and the edge of the TV. So now I'm going to do some um, vertical adjustments. There's a vertical size adjustment here. And we're going to bring this down about there. And then I'm going to adjust the vertical hold, which is up here actually, to bring it, let's see, pin, pin cushion, V-line, vertical linearity, let's try this one here. These are hard to see. There we go. So that's essentially the, the size. So we'll do that and then we'll crank it down a little bit with the vertical size. See this? I'm trying to get rid of that bubble line at the bottom. Well guys, I didn't want to bore you with a lot of tedious footage, but I got it. I've been out here for hours with my son, Bob, tinkering with this thing and adjusting this thing and playing with this thing. And I got it to be what I consider perfect. So there is a pitfall. And let me show you Pac-Man. There is Pac-Man, everything beautifully crisp and straight and looking beautiful. And I am so excited. I'm gonna put this thing back together, put it back in its spot <laughs> and close out this much shorter video with a big smile on my face. Um, so see you in a second. All right, guys, so I am closing out this fourth and final video in my repair series for this 1976 Sony Trinitron solid state color television. And as you can see, I've got it looking really good and I got a big smile on my face because I was very stressed out about getting this, uh, being able to get this repaired and restored the way that I wanted it. And it took a lot of effort, lots of time, lots of tedious work and research and all that stuff, but it was well worth it because I saved this thing from the dumpster and I'm able to now have it in my room and it's absolutely beautiful television with real wood. I just love the way it looks. And I got my 2600 hooked up to this. I got my 7800 hooked up to that and so on and so on with my other consoles. But really we're focusing on this, but I've replaced probably about 30 capacitors or so in this t television, and um, I had to re replace two transistors as well that were associated with the missing blue color. And I'll show a clip of what this looked like when I first turned it on, but it was really in rough shape. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it repaired or fixed. Um, and lots of, lots of hours of tedious work and research and frustration and all that stuff and and I finally got it to where I want it so very very excited um, as you can see pitfall looks great it's nice soft sharp color and geometry looks good and it's just where I want it to be so I'll show a couple other games so you can see 
how good everything looks. All right, so there's Pac-Man, looking nice and sharp, great colors, great geometry, all the lines are nice and straight, uh, the orientation is good, the aspect ratio is good, looks great. All right, here's Galaxian, another great game to show because it's got the lines on the sides and you see that the orientation is good. So there's that one. I'll show one more, I'll show Berserk. Love this game. But again, it's got the box on there, so it's a good one to show. But I'm just so excited. I'll turn this down. So excited that I got this where I want it. And I, I know this was a long video series, but um, I just wanted to document the whole thing and put it out there for people to watch. I'm learning as I go. Um, I'm no expert, but um, I've been successful at all the things I've set out to repair. I know I'll get stumped at some point one day, but so far, um, it's really boosting my confidence and it's really getting me more into this hobby of saving these things from dumpsters and restoring these wonderful pieces of machinery um, to use. Or as I said in another video, um, I'm eager to save these things and if I don't have room for them or don't want them, to offer them up to commu community members. Um, maybe just, you know, they can just pay for the parts and shipping and I'll just fix them for free just to save them. And I, I think that's uh, something that I can really see myself doing. Uh, in the future here but uh, i can't tell you how excited i am to have this thing fixed and working and in my room and i'm thankful to my customer for giving it to me and um i guess that's about it but you know it was it was a lot of work lots of blood sweat and tears but it was well worth it in the end to save this thing and make a fun video about it so thanks for watching i hope it wasn't too boring but i'll see you the next time